<coughs> um, <coughs> you be a little bitch. <coughs> uh, I need to like, clear my throat. Yeah, yeah, you no, have yeah. too much cum down there? Oh god, no. oh god, oh god. Uh, oh, god. <laughs> Hello everybody, it's King Chow. Welcome to another <laughs> Subnautica video. And in this video, Bro, we're gonna be doing- Nah, Cap, you cannot do a Subnautica <laughs> video on this Sons of Liberty <laughs> channel without Tristan Rock. Come on, come on. You just can't. Anyways, get on with the intro, you- Gega role player. Okay, so uh, we haven't recorded it in a while. Sorry, but a while know, is an understatement. Yeah, like a month or or what is it? A month. We were busy living our lives and actually like Being doing wise? shit outside of ranting online yeah. with for nobody to hear. No, not nobody. Not nobody. Yeah. Seventeen subscribers. Let's oh. go. You know what? Hit that sub battle. Because, like... Make can't. it 18. Exactly. Well, guess what, guys? We hit a milestone on another social media platform. Oh, my God. What did we hit? We hit 10 followers on TikTok. Oh, my God. All <laughs> guys, the Zoomers you know are means. becoming red-pilled. Guys, remember that... You know what that means? Kaika has to make a TikTok account. This yeah. is that was how what he said. it works. It is true, I did say that, so I will make a TikTok account. And also, uh, we did not pass 20 subscribers by the end of 2021. I'm so disappointed in not all of you. You are all lovely and hot. But Wait, what? for the future people who did Wait. not subscribe, um, you, you have no purpose. Your life is meaningless, and you should... <laughs> Wait, why'd you say the future people? Shouldn't you say the past people who didn't subscribe? The past Price? people? No, nah, they're they're in the past. They do not need roasting. Only yeah. the future people. We want no more subscribers. We want to stay stagnant forever. This is canon. I mean, preach, amen. We know? got our wish. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, guys, uh, welcome second. back to the Sons of Liberty podcast. We've yeah. been we've been messing around for a little bit, but we're back. It's the new year. Nothing's fucking changed, and let's talk I about mean, it. Yeah. So uh, let's start with uh, Joe Biden, and we obviously have a segment on this channel called the Weekly Joe Biden Slam. But uh, not not we missed, yeah, 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 because we missed a, you know a couple weeks, a couple weeks, really couple weekly. months, you know. Yeah, it's not the, like the weekly Joe Biden slam anymore. It's kind of like the the not so weekly Joe Biden recap, but like you know, it is what it is. more like the yearly at this point. Yearly, yeah, the yeah, monthly. Yeah, it's a good acronym. How about synonym, how about yeah. uh, we'll, we'll cover our bases and we'll say bi bi yearly. Bi yearly. Bi yearly. Bi yearly. Let's uh, go. And, yeah. Anyways, so okay, Joe so. Biden got trolled on live TV. Recently. Oh my God! We do a little bit of trolling. Yeah, and <laughs> it was probably just some random guy. Biden was like calling people like the day before Christmas, you know, wishing everyone a happy, a happy day. And uh, this guy just RKO's him out of nowhere. Like, uh, <laughs> what was that one guy? John Cena. That's him. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. And uh, he just says like, "Let's go, Brandon." And Biden's <laughs> like, "Let's go, Brandon," because he has no brain cells left. I hope you have a wonderful hey, Christmas. Well, yeah, I hope you guys have a wonderful Christmas as well. Uh, Merry Christmas you. and let's go, Brandon. Let's go, Brandon. I <laughs> <Yeah>. agree. <laughs> hey, by the way, where are you in Oregon? Where's your home? I think we lost him. <laughs> and he's like, where do you live? Yeah. He's like, where do you live? <laughs> what do you live? I forgot about that. He said, where do you live? <laughs> oh, <laughs> bro, man did not respond. He was so scared. Bro, he's he's like, like, wait, what? <laughs> uh, at the White House, obviously. <laughs> We're tracing your callback right now. Secret service on the way. <laughs> like, there's one issue, like... The Secret Service, I'm pretty sure they already had his location when he called Biden, right? Yeah. It's like a thing they do. Yeah. So it's kind of like a weird question for Biden to ask. But you know what? He doesn't have many brain cells left anyways. So nah, it's like, it's... Hey, where do you live? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, Brandon. <laughs> and he, you should, okay, look. I want everyone to watch the clip and look at Jill Biden's face. Or sorry, excuse me, Dr. Jill Biden's face. Obviously. And, uh, the disappointment she had in Jill Biden once he said that was immeasurable bro okay. 
Okay. Yeah, let's go, Brandon. It's hilarious. He is my favorite football player. Okay, like, Brandon. Lefties have been absolutely like crying their eyes as as usual, of course. They've been crying their eyes out about let's go, Brandon. Even though they've been you know they've been saying you know fuck Trump for like his entire presidency and even afterwards, but as soon as people were like yeah let's go, Brandon, uh, they were like this is a danger to our democracy. But even Joe Biden says it. So I I mean. Yeah. All I'll say is, uh, Trump wasn't exactly going in rallies going like, fuck Trump. Really just fucking betrayal. Dude, like, ah, uh, like, Joe Biden makes me warm in the heart because of clips like these. Where he just, he has no brain cells left and he doesn't know how to utilize the remaining brain cells. So he, he just says weird stuff like this. It's, it's great. It, it really is great. Because, like, great. the whole thing about, you know, let's go Brandon, was that it was supposed to be the people's, you know, resistance, you know, especially, you know, in, in the realm of sports against this, you know, this, this presidency. And, you know, it's petty. It's just as petty as fuck Trump was, although arguably from a much more subtle place, which, of course, made it ten times funnier. Because, yeah. as always, the left can't meme. But, you know, it's just so funny because the person who it was making fun of didn't recognize that it was at them, and then they played along. It's like, it's accidentally wholesome. <laughs> I don't know. Now, the debate for the past couple of days, or a couple of weeks at this yeah. point, yeah. has been like, was Joe Biden saying, let's go Brandon, to a like, clown on the right? Or did he genuinely just misspoke? Like, did he misspeak when he said, let's go Brandon? That's the debate. Now, I don't know, actually, because to be honest, even if he did, like, say, let's go Brandon to clown on the right, it didn't, you know, it, it didn't, didn't work, work out in his favor. <laughs> yeah. So regardless, he got, you know, he got fucked. That, that, so that, that really would be matters. the equivalent of... Uh, Trump saying, <laughs> yeah, uh, fuck Trump to own the left. <laughs> like, what? Yeah, exactly. It doesn't make a lot of sense. It, it, it really doesn't. But the other thing is, I don't think it was either. I don't think mm. it was a mistake. I don't think really? it was a gaffe. And I don't think that it was supposed to be some, like, gotcha uh, towards the right and towards, you know, like, anyone who isn't, you know, the Democratic Party. I right. don't think it's that deep. I think he was genuinely saying, let's go, Brandon, because he didn't know what it meant, and he thought it was a reference to the actual player named Brandon, and he was just saying it because he thought it was wholesome. I don't you think it is actually that deep. You know, if that's the case, like, goddamn, it is, like, he has briefings every day, right? <laughs> what is he doing in them? That's the question. Bro, he's playing Candy Crush on his phone, bro. <laughs> oh, and, and don't Candy forget Crush. eating chocolate chip ice cream. Exactly. Exactly, bro. And cupcakes from a friend of ours. <laughs> the president <laughs> of the United um, States. Jeffrey Epstein's everybody. island, of course. Big uh, perfection. Uh, uh. We're on the FBO's wanted list now. Uh, we always have been, always will be. Exactly. Especially from the first episode. Oh my gosh. Let's go. <laughs> exactly. No, but like, for real... I don't know. Look, I don't like Joe Biden. Okay, right. Obviously, right. But this entire scenario, like, I do not think Joe Biden has a lot of malice left in him. I think he might have when he was a lot younger. You know, especially some of his you know earlier uh, political moves definitely were a little cruel. But now I think, and you know, obviously this does have to do somewhat with his you know, senile, you know, sort of uh, attitude and behavior, which is evident of possibly some brain decay, so possibly a case of dementia, which we've discussed previously. I think it's kind of dulled Joe Biden to the point where he's not really evil anymore. He just has no idea what he's doing. <laughs> yeah, that's, I mean, I see that happening. What about you, Sony? Bro, man, see now. Put him in a home. Oh, Put God. him in a sh oh, freaking God. home. And, and by like, home, we don't mean the White House. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to be fair, does he really get out of his home that often? I don't know. 
maybe. The, the only time he does when uh, Kamala is in the Oval Office uh, giving him papers and just telling him, yes, yeah, sign it. Just, just <laughs> sign it. You know, there's there could be another side to the story where he only leaves the White House once Kamala enters it because he doesn't want to slip on some wet floors, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, I didn't get Oh, say is the N-word. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> no. Obviously. <laughs> he thinks he's going to kill her. Oh, wait, he, he thinks she's going to kill him. Ooh. Uh, no, again, I don't think that Joe Biden can think that far ahead. <laughs> like, God, the, Kamala Harris, like, if Joe Biden, like, if he stays in office the whole way, like for for the next three years, yeah, Kamala Harris is probably one of the unluckiest person on the planet, just because I felt like she 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 went into the presidency going in, you know, as like, okay, this guy is about to die, like he literally cannot stand, he literally cannot go through a speech without yeah. gaffing, yeah, you know, I'm gonna be president and I'm gonna be the first black female president of the United States, exactly. That is. That's, I, I don't want to say accomplishment, but obviously to her, it's an accomplishment of its own. Well, I, I think I think sort of the idea was that, you know, uh, in this racist, sexist, uh, bigoted American capitalist society, the only way that a black woman could become president is to right. l- sort of sneak her way in under the friendly face of another white male. Cause I course, mean, she did accomplish it. She did become president for like 45 minutes. Yeah, you know, she did actually. She became acting yeah. president for a little bit, so. Exactly. There was and, that. You know, I, I do kind of feel like a, a lot of, uh, you know, social media and a lot of uh, people on the moderate left are trying to, uh, like, with, with influence and power, are trying to yeah. subtly sort of get the population used to the idea that Joe Biden might not be the president and then it might be eventually yeah. become Kamala, so that the switch becomes a little, you know, more seamless. I'm right. not saying that this is necessarily, like, a coup, necessarily. Although, that is what everyone is thinking. What I am saying is that I think a lot of uh, center-left media recognizes that Joe Biden is on a harsh timer, and... When the president seat changes, it creates a lot of chaos, and obviously they don't want that because that you know shakes up their order. So they're trying to get people used to the idea of Kamala being the face of the nation. Good luck. I don't, like, and this is a good po- segue to our next point. So um, obviously, as Chow said, some leftists are like getting into their mind that Kamala will be the next president in a you know very short amount of time. But they're not doing a very good job at it. Like, it's weird. I feel like there's a leftist divide in the sense that some leftists believe that Joe Biden is a crap show because he's a crap show. And some leftists believe Joe Biden is a crap show only because of Kamala Harris. Oh, yeah. You see that. You see that reflected in a lot of the, the hit pieces directed towards Kamala. It's like Joe Biden, you know, he's having difficulties with his infrastructure bill. Well, it would make it easier if Kamala Harris had a better relationship in the Senate. Like, <laughs> at a certain point, like, yes, maybe that's true, but you gotta, like, we were told Joe Biden is the, the master of all negotiations in Congress because he's been there for literal millennia, right? Right. At, at a certain point, it's it's Biden's fault, right? We can't blame everything on Kamala, although I do think she's not aiding him, I think, you know, a more strategic person could have been chosen for pres- or vice president. Yeah, well, that's on yeah. them at that point. That's not even... That's not Kamala, alright? Kamala's just there waiting for Joe Biden to die. Pretty much. <laughs> I mean, can you blame Joe Biden? He's senile. Like, we expect yeah. him to pick, like, the next great? No. No. <laughs> yeah. But, like, you can also think of it as, like, maybe Joe Biden had a, a forehead or a four... Yeah, forehead idea, right? Where he was like, okay... I'm probably going to be an unpopular president, so maybe I choose an un- uh, even more unpopular vice president, where I could sort of blame everything on that person. Oh like, my! Or he was God. trying to just split the black vote by like, picking a black <laughs> vice well, president. I mean, it is very obvious that the left nowadays does always think of things only in a race lens. So, <laughs> yeah, actually, that would make a lot of sense. Like, <clears throat> there are so many different angles you could sort of think of this. Right. With, with Kamala, it's like it's almost impossible to understand why Biden chose her as vice president. 
I think this so. segues really well to our next subtopic. Oh, wait, hold on. I actually do oh. want to say one more thing before we transition. Um, I don't know if you guys have heard of Freedom Tunes. They make, like, really funny, yeah. like, political, uh, like, animations on YouTube. Um, obviously, this isn't really a shout-out because they're, like, orders of magnitude more popular than us. But the point is... Uh, no, bro, like, we're shouting them out, bro. What do you mean? <laughs> But but, but I guess sad. but I guess what I'm saying is I wanted to sort of bring up this one you know point from one of their animations. I like to think that the reason why Kamala Harris became vice president for 2020 was because Joe Biden was sniffing her hair, liked the scent, and just picked her. That was it. <laughs> I mean, I that's a, honestly I don't think it's so... true, but it's funny. <laughs> <clears throat> like I wouldn't be surprised because he's he's kind of weird around women. It's, let's put it like he? that. I feel like he is. Yeah, he's really weird around women. So, you know what? I'll never, I won't rule it out at it's, this point. I mean, he's weirder than freaking our co-host Kaiko over here. Like, oh, oh bro, man. bro, whoa, bro whoa, friendly whoa, fire, whoa. Bre- friendly fire. <laughs> I'm I'm very respectful towards women. I love women. I I think independent okay, that, Women's that's Day cap. should be every that's day. Cap. That's uh-huh, cap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You first have to talk to them to respect them. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> media's got a whoa. point. I don't know. You know what? True. <laughs> Gg. He'll never get a woman now. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, uh, okay, so speaking let's of women, move on. speaking of women, ah, uh, yes, silence. Uh, yes, yeah, so I thought you were doing women. the translation. Oh, you want me to do it? Do the thing. Yeah. Speaking of shitty women, uh, Kamala is taking a lot of criticisms so that Biden can silently push the 5.5 trillion infrastructure bill. <clears throat> so, what's yeah. your thoughts on that? It's not going to be passed. It, that's that was like the problem with. The, the whole debate here is people thought that uh, Joe Manchin was going to come around on the infrastructure bill when he clearly said he wasn't going to like m- months ago, like half a year ago. He was like, unless you seriously turn down the spending, this is not going to pass. Uh, and they never brought down the spending. So I'm not even sure why people are upset with Manchin. He actually was just, he's a very honest man. So yeah. And, and they're trying to blame it on Kamala now. Because you know she's the president of the Senate, so that doesn't wasn't really work it like, out. Wasn't it like three trillion in the beginning? Well, okay, it's a three point five trillion dollar <clears throat> infrastructure built on paper, okay. But okay. when you actually add up everything, and you know, you discount all the government tax loopholes that they implemented, it's about five point five trillion dollars. That's the actual value of the bill. Yeah. What a pain. It is a pain. Yeah. And I, you can only like. Democrats only brought this upon themselves. Like Joe Biden, I don't know. You know, as we said before, master negotiation, but can't seem to he can't seem to pull a bill together. You know, that's what it is. Yeah. 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 We done with that topic. All right. I mean, yeah. Honestly, well, you right. know, uh, guys, the thing about uh, you know Joe Biden is uh, it is uh, Joe Biden is not Trump. It is not right. an endless fountain for which content and memes just always spew. There's always something, but there's just it's it's kind of a worse content farm. That's, that's all I'll say. You know. I mean, yeah. speaking about someone named Joe, someone named Joe Mansion. Oh my god! And speaking of Kamala. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> bro, Kamala snapped at Charlemagne, bro, on what? Suck. Charlemagne the god. You can't just say Charlemagne. Bro, I don't even know who the fuck this guy is. He's just some guy on TV or what, what's it? Some guy. Yeah, Radio, but I guess show. You, see, exactly. Show. TV. Sense well, of it's, Liberty it's kind is of known like, for not, he's not on TV knowing really, what we're talking yeah. about in our topics. Exactly. And being very uh, prepared. Charlemagne is popular because he's a prevalent voice in hip-hop and that's that's why he's prominent that's it i mean i don't listen to music so yeah anyways yeah that's it with him nah so basically charlemagne asked kamala like hey like jokingly who's the who's the real president joe biden or joe uh what's his name martian joe mansion yeah martian 
Um, <clears throat> and Kamala really heated at this, like really heated. Who's the real president of this country? Is it Joe Manchin or Joe Biden, Madam Vice President? Come on, Charlemagne. I really, Come on. I, it's Joe Biden. I can't no, tell no, sometimes. No, 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 no. It's Joe Biden, and don't start talking like a Republican about asking whether or not he's president. Do you think Joe Manchin and, is and a problem? It's Joe and, it's Joe and it's Joe Biden, and I'm vice president, and my name is Kamala Harris. Huh? <laughs> and, you know, usually when she gives a response, she does that laughing thing. This one, she was not laughing at all. She was mad. You saw the true side of her. God, mask off again. <laughs> that future song, mask off. No, it, that's what the point of the mask is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, okay, look. Like, this is the problem with the whole thing. So, uh, Kamala, to contextualize why didn't a little you bit. visit the border? <laughs> 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 yeah. Kamala, who is the real president? Shao's <laughs> <laughs> laugh is just amazing. <laughs> Anyways, right. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, what was I saying? All right, Charlemagne. So, like the and Kamala. So, well, really, to contextualize on Sonny's point, mm -hmm. uh, what happened really there was uh, Charlemagne the God said, "Hey, who's the real president? Joe Manchin or Joe Biden?" It seems like Joe Manchin because he's holding up the infrastructure bill, which you know, I'm gonna counter that point a little bit here and say like. The infrastructure bill doesn't really relate to the presidency at all. Like, if Joe Biden wants to, you know, promote a bill, that's fine. He could do that. Yeah. But that's not in the president's, you know, like, that's not something a president can do. He can't just willfully create bills and execute them on the executive level. I mean, right. sort like, to some degree, yes, of course, with executive orders. But that's, that's a whole different conversation in, in its own at this point. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. Um, you know, that the the point Charlemagne the God made, I, I feel like was kind of a weird point. But anyways, I feel like, you know, generally leftists or Democrats, because they they like big government, they assume that the president also has to initiate a lot of bigger bills. And if, you know, one person in Congress is blocking all that change, then they're kind of like the president. That You know, I think it's bad, but that's how they think. Yeah. Um. Anyways, it's not even like Joe Manchin alone. There's another senator from um, um, Arizona named Kristen Sim Sim Simina. Simina. I can't remember her last name. She's also not on board with the bill, so I find it weird that only one person is taking all the blame, and that's Joe Manchin. But it is what it is at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Really weird topic. Anyways. Oh, another weird topic. Omicron. Oh! Omni. Oh, Did you say Omni? Oh, Omni. here we go. Okay, it's so, Omicron. It's Om. It's, it's Omicron. Omicron. It's Omicron. It's Omicron. But is it what? Well, how is it Omi? Okay, it's it's because. it's Omicron, not Omi. Omicron. Omicron. It's like homie. Omicron, Omicron, as in the Greek letter. You know, all the COVID variants are based off of Greek letters. Oh yeah, Alpha, there's beta, like uh, gamma, delta, delta, the big one. That like you know. Chat, what's after delta? Uh, Epsilon. <laughs> What's after that? Uh, I, I'm, I'm reciting from memory. Epsilon, I think it's Zeta? Okay, well, let me, let me explain th to you something. Maybe it's not Zeta, I don't know. So, uh, Zeta is either letter 6 or letter 7. Right. Anyways, Omicron is like oh. 15 or something. Shout. There are a lot of COVID variants. Yeah. So, Omicron was initially going to be called G, like X I. <gasps> no. And, uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> no. Chad. And, and it wasn't called G. They because had, it, it's it's Z. Well, yeah, Z. But it is it it's they had to skip this, it because, because of because of Z. <laughs> because of China. No shot. <laughs> yeah, they had to uh, skip it because of Jiju. Uh, that's yeah, the funny. same spelling. <clears throat> yeah, so it is what it is. Like, we're, we're playing such weird politics at this point, it doesn't even make sense. That's a whole different story, you know. Uh, continue. Oh, yeah. So, um. Right, so, uh, the Omicron variant. 
Uh, we've been getting new variants for a little while now because COVID is a novel coronavirus and it keeps mutating, right? And as it passes from person to person, that rate of mutation increases. It's why the pandemic is such a big deal. If there was only one variant, I mean, uh, considering uh, influence from s certain actors in the government, the pandemic probably would have been over by the end of the first year. But the fact is, it's constantly mutating and we're constantly having to, you know, create uh, new vaccines and n new technology to fight the different variants as it goes on. By the way, just, just so everyone watching knows, um, if you got a booster shot, like I did, uh, f for, uh, for recently, it was not prepared against Omicron. It was prepared against a previous variant, and I believe it was Delta. So if Delta is variant 4, and Omicron is like variant 15, think in your head, how many jabs are you going to have to get to be completely caught up? You're never going to be caught up. It's going to keep on mutating. You're not going to catch up. Theoretically, if you wanted to stay completely safe and completely caught up with every <coughs> variant that came out... You would have to take, like, so many boosters over the course of, like, a decade. And that entire time, you'd have to wear masks, and you'd have to be locked down, and you'd have to keep so social distancing, and you don't have to see people that much. And you'd have to follow every government restriction, and every, you know, cringe loophole, and every, you know, thing. All the while, you have to smile and act like you like it. Or you are a right-wing reactionary, blah, 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 you get the point. It's ridiculous, and it's especially ridiculous because Omicron is one of the lightest variants we've ever seen. Omicron yeah. is barely even a coronavirus. Do you want to know why? It actually shares a lot more similarities with a cold. Yeah, it's being called the Omnicold, you know, uh, you know, instead of Omicron, because the symptoms are so light. Almost no, I think it's li almost, I, I think it might actually literally be no one is dying from Omicron. Maybe there are a couple, but it's not even close compared to the older, you know, variants, which were genuinely a threat. And there's a theory going around, and, you know, there actually is possibly some, you know, back to this, that Omicron was misdiagnosed as a variant of the SARS-2 novel coronavirus, you know, the one that's been keeping us inside this whole time, that it might actually legit just be some <coughs> offshoot of the flu or whatever, and that it's been misdiagnosed because of what can only be described as a bias because we're looking for COVID because we have to stay on top of COVID. We misdiagnosed a not COVID virus. I'm not saying that's the case because I don't know if there's enough evidence for that, but it's possible. And if that was the case, you know, we're all talking about Omicron. We're all scared of Omicron. You know, there's going to be this new spike, but what if getting Omicron was actually a good thing? That sounds crazy, but think about it, okay? The risk of getting COVID is serious. You could have long-term damage to your lungs, to your heart, to certain parts of your body, you know? It's a serious condition that can have long-lasting, even life-lasting long uh, effects. But if Omicron is a dud, but it still gives you some basic resistance to other COVID variants. Because, I mean, even if it is a cold, they are definitely genetically somewhat similar. Even yeah. if it gives you the slightest bit of an edge, even if it allows you to achieve some level of herd immunity, and all you have to go through is a normal cold that'll leave you out the same way as when you entered, wouldn't getting Omicron be the best vaccine you could ever get? Uh, no. Because no. the Omicron does not give the, even the same amount of 
uh, immunity as the vaccine would. Because you have a 33% shot to get the COVID with the vaccine. With the immunity of Omicron, it's much higher. Because your immune system would still be immune. It would not be immune. It would still be very vulnerable to right, get it. Right. But I'm just saying, like, you know. Uh, You'd have to get a pretty severe case of Omicron for that. Technically, you won't. And, and this is, I've been saying this for a long time. I remember talking about this on the podcast a couple episodes ago. Yeah. When Delta was happening. Delta was the know. big thing, yeah. Right. Ooh. And I was I was telling you know, I was saying like if you're young, I mean, getting Delta is not really a big deal. In fact, to some degree it might be incur it should be encouraged because if you get that COVID immunity, then you'll be immune for, you know, possibly even more deadly variations and that's right. what you want. Now uh, I, I will say Delta is, you know, very dangerous uh right. it, it's not nearly as dangerous to young people but it is definitely still dangerous but the yeah. thing about omicron is that it's essentially a blank bullet and the idea that you could even gain some you know substantial immunity against the other covid variants from getting omicron and there's a lot there's that you know huge reduced risk I, i'm not i'm not saying go get you know omicron i think right. getting any variant of COVID is obviously a bad thing because obviously it's very hard to tell which one you get and just generally you don't want to be getting sick at all just by a default. But I'm saying that if you were to get sick, because let's be real, we're probably all going to get sick eventually until right. this thing gets, you know, dealt with in a serious way. I mean, the estimates from... 2020 were that 40 to 70 percent of the population could soon catch some version of coronavirus within their lifetimes if this continues to go on for the next you know two to three years and that seems to be our trajectory uh now of course that was in 2020 so obviously that's outdated information but what i'm saying is you know a lot of people are probably going to get sick, and I guess what I'm saying is, if you are going to get sick, get sick with Omicron. You know. Right. Look, this is how I view it. Omicron and the flu are almost, unless you're really, really fucking old, and you, or you're really not healthy. I mean, really not healthy. The, if you if you are okay with yourself getting the flu, then Omicron shouldn't bother you. If you yeah. if you want to be protective against yourself against the flu. And you have some issues with that. I, I guess I see your point, right? Yeah, like if you're yeah. immunocompromised, then you're fucked. Right. But then exactly. again, you would have been fucked for a flu. Or, you know, right. any any virus would be incredibly serious for you. You are a minority case because you're immunocompromised. Most people are not immunocompromised. So, well, I'm, I'm not saying that your life doesn't matter. What I am saying is that you know, the social restrictions and plans that we put into place should be considerate of people who have at least mostly functioning immune systems. If you're, like, this is serious, like, if you aren't healthy or very old, go get the vaccine and go get every booster available because that's what you need, right? But if you are not any of those two groups, just go live your life. It's not that big a deal. I mean, there's no necessary, you know, problem that I, I mean, can tell anyway from getting the vaccine. I'm not saying that, I don't think anyone here would say that getting the vaccine is inherently bad. No. But you should never be forced to. Just Definitely, as a, as exactly. A rule, as just a rule, like, yeah. being forced to is absolute tyranny. And the other thing is, it's not like you're essentially signing your life away by not doing so. You're just at a higher risk. It's just how it right. is. Yeah, just be safe, yeah. but reasonably safe. Yeah, be very cautious, especially with those, even people who are young, if you have those pe type of people in the household, people who are old, people who have pre-existing heart condition, people with asthma, people who have other issues with their body, be people safe. People who are right? really fucking fat. Oh, <laughs> whoa, did someone say that? Oh, I'm uh, raising my hand. Whoa, whoa look. <laughs> yeah. Just be safe, all right? Don't yeah. do anything stupid. Don't, I mean, don't be fucking 
breath to breath of people. Literally like just people. use common sense. Exactly. Oh, like, common sense isn't much common anymore, boys. So I, I don't know. know if we should say that yeah, anymore. But hey, if you're watching The Sons of Liberty, you probably have a certain level. Like one of less brain cell. No, one more. Uh, <laughs> one, one point five more brain cells. One right. more brain cell with a standard deviation of negative one. <laughs> and, and by the way, just to clear up my point, okay, I'm not saying I'm not saying be ignorant to COVID. I'm just saying like be reasonable. No about one risk. No yeah. one in this podcast would ever say be. Uh, be ignorant to the virus that could fucking kill you. you right. Know? Just, just be reasonable. Be reasonable. That's all we're asking. Don't, don't get swept up in fear to the point where you take action because some authority told you to, and now your freedoms are gone, and now you're wondering why you're a slave to the state. You have to make these decisions <laughs> because you Damn. want to, not because someone told you to. Just that was this. some escalation. <laughs> Well, I mean, it, it is some escalation, but you know that's how yeah. it, that, that's how it works. No, of course. Yeah. Things go from zero to one hundred really quickly when you're talking about totalitarians. It's true. Yeah. Anyways, so that's that's pretty much the story um, with Omicron. You know, Fox News definitely had some uh, quite interesting things to say about it. Uh, you know that uh, they they generally uh, agree with us. I'd say so. You know, we are now Fox News. That's that's yeah. that's great. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I would say don't be like scared of the Omicron. Omicron, yeah. if you guys want to say it, but be cautious because it is a very much real thing. It like is still for gross. those who watch sports, a bunch of your favorite players and favorite teams have gotten a bunch of COVID cases, such as the NFL. Um, like the past couple of weeks, the Rams got 25 players uh, had COVID. And to put that in perspective, in total of your roster, there's like 53. So almost uh, basically half of your team got COVID. Yeah. So to put that in perspective for you. I so mean, it's very much a real thing. Yeah. I mean, you know, sports moment, but, you know. Yeah, I had to put it in there. It's my daily sports. You had to. It's my like include something before we no. transition. Yeah, yeah, no. sure. Go ahead. No, no, no. We're, nah, nah, we're yes, going. Yes, funny. Yes. Nah. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll just say it. So I'm sure everyone's familiar with H3H3, right? Oh yeah, that guy. Yeah, oh. that guy that once used to be funny, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. He so fell off. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, but anyways, so a couple of days actually, yet yeah, literally yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh ethan klein h3 h3 said oh like God, man ethan. yeah <laughs> oh 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 ethan some guy in this world S some said, person i don't know <laughs> yeah said that joe rogan who lives on elk meat egg yolk and human growth hormone with lungs full of tar thinks he's healthier than everyone this motherfucker is such a bitch that when he got covid he threw the kitchen sink at it if you're so healthy just ride it out like you say a man should and then he he continues and says like man i'm as healthy as joe rogan you know like gosh dang you shouldn't take advice from him take advice from me because he has an alpha brain and that, that's that's it and then people were memeing uh, on h3 h3 that, like yeah, i'll yeah. put up yeah i'll put up some pictures in that's definitely this is bullshit one i'm definitely i'm just I'm fucking censored. This is censorship. Hey, hey, this it's not. It's not censorship when I do it. That is just. Oh, I'm. Oh, what the fuck? Why is there a guy in a diaper? <laughs> oh, that's that's H three H three. Put this on the script, Joe. I don't want to see H3, that. That's H three H three. I don't want to uh, see yeah. that. Get that out. Get people, that out. People were comparing that picture of H three H three to okay. Joe Rogan. Okay, next H3. topic. Right, right. So, okay, so we're talking about. You know, COVID, right? That guy. We don't... Whatever. Okay. No, stop it! <laughs> okay. So, we were talking about COVID just now, okay? Yeah. Um, I think there's a lot of serious conversation, like we've been having, and we will continue to have uh, for until the end of time, about what's going on with the virus and what you should do to be safe and what you shouldn't do, maybe, if it's a little bit extra, or maybe... If an authoritarian is, you know, holding you at metaphorical gunpoint, you know, that's not okay. But the conversation 
about the pandemic and the conversation about the pseudo lockdown. I'm saying pseudo, I'll get into that a little bit later. Are ultimately two different conversations. And the reason why I say that specifically is that it's been two years and we still haven't quote unquote flattened the curve. Yes. We're still on vaccines. We're still on masks. We're partially on social distancing, depending on what, what Fauci feels, I guess. We're, you know, intermittently on lockdown. We're intermittently on shutting down and then opening up uh, for small businesses. Big businesses get to stay open whenever, but small businesses get to flourish and then get stomped on by the mighty boot of the government whenever they feel like it because covid This is absolutely ridiculous. I've actually been saying from the very beginning that I think the concept of the lockdown as it has been, you know, uh, demonstrated was an absolute mistake. And that after two to three weeks, after the government formulated some type of plan, that while we should have still been somewhat keeping our distance, that everyone should have been allowed to go back to work. So that the economy wouldn't crash, so that we wouldn't need stimulus checks, and so that we could still stay self-efficient. And I do still believe that on some level that was a tactical move to introduce a type of soft socialism into the U.S. And it's only sort of over. We're, We're still kind of in the midst of it, you know, but only when it's convenient, I guess. So... It's disheartening to see that this is still going on two years later. I'm not saying that, you know, COVID is over. I'm saying that the fact that we're still locked down, the fact that we're still in this situation where the, the our lives are basically just being put on pause. I don't know, man. It, it's enough. It's enough. This is not how we keep people safe. This is how we keep people from living their best life. And I think, you know, really, truthfully, there's only a certain type of person that wants to do that. And they just happen to be running the country. So that's that's just great. And, of course... Oh, sorry, what were you saying? Of course. No, I was agreeing with you. Yeah. Like, indeed, you know, Zavala. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck <laughs> up. That's the moment. But the, other, but the other thing is, um, slowly... Uh, of course, on Twitter, because it's always on Twitter. Uh, the discourse um, about the unvaccinated is getting more and more hostile by the day. Uh, right, this yeah. person, this absolute genius who identifies themselves as a liberal in the bio. I want to say a word so bad. Says, yes, VP, we can also tax the unvaccinated to pay student loans. We need student loan relief now uh, in reaction to Kamala saying in 2021, we reduced the unemployment rate to 4.2%. We created 6 million jobs and reduced the deficit by over 300 billion. And we're keeping that progress as we go into 2022, which, you know, fair enough. That's, 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 that's pretty good. I mean, you know, it's, it's something, right? But I want to focus more on that that person's reply. Tax the unvaccinated to pay for student loans. If you don't get the jab, pay up. Like, what? Now you have to pay to stay unvaccinated. This is ridiculous. Before, it was you pay for your medicine. You pay for your treatment. Then it became get it for free because... It only works if everyone gets it. And now it's pay to not get it. Like, what? Yeah, I don't even know what this has to do with student loans. Like, in any sense. But you know what? You go they them person. <laughs> they them? I don't know. I don't uh, want to be offensive. So I, 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 I don't really want to look at their pronouns. <laughs> yeah, I just said that to be neutral. Wait, so I, I won't offend oh anyone. Oh my god, they don't. They don't have pronouns in bio. Oh no. That's a fresh air. Hashtag cancelled. Uh, oh, and they, they joined January of 2021. Well, that was a mistake. Anyways. 
<laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, tax the unvaccinated. Uh, honestly, that whole part about student loans was completely irrelevant. Tax the unvaccinated because if you don't get the jab, you you have to pay up. That's oh my stupid. god. That's the message. This guy, the guy who said that weird shit about the unvaccinated, he put his chess elo in his Twitter bio. <laughs> <laughs> so he's pretty much like out of 100% of the players that play chess he's better than 90% of them what a fucking nerd I yeah, am he... better at chess than you also and he... taxi and vaccinated <laughs> <laughs> like, why is that in his bio damn that's like that's small dick syndrome right there <laughs> oh god like, you just have to flex something yeah, he's I, I would know hey yo he might hack Hello. us careful guys Hello. he's a uh, IT guy Oh, let's go. A computer science nerd. He might hack uh, us. Oh my god, IT. Yeah, I bet he's a furry. <laughs> There's so many furries in IT. It's not even funny. <laughs> it's interesting you would know that. Yeah. <laughs> interesting. <laughs> Anyways, moving on. Uh, <laughs> so, moving on, okay, indeed. so, um, this whole thing about the lockdown with Omicron and whatever, it's pretty cringe, okay? Right. So let's talk about something else that was pretty cringe. Uh, Alexander Ocasio Cortez. AOC. Oh, AOC. Uh, uh, uh. Mm. Love having love having you around. You just make such great hot takes. Uh, remember when AOC? Uh, I think she like played something with Pokemon. I think. Among oh yeah, she, she played saucy games. Yeah, she played Among, Among Us? Us with Pokemon. Among Us. She's clearly oh gosh, the most where? sus of. This uh, is preserve. Fucking viewers have one more chromosome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry, if you watch Sons of Liberty, you got an extra chromosome. It's just how it is. <laughs> sorry, five we, sorry. Chromosomes. We don't make the rules. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So. 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 What did gosh, AOC do this time? She did a no no. What didn't she do? That's a better question. That is a better question. Well, she uh, tweeted as a response to something that Steve Cortez said something. Uh, 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 it's not uh, truly uh, important. It was about uh, mandates and uh, masking. We've already talked about that to death. And we've already had a COVID segment. So the uh, the content is not really important. But we, I guess the only thing that is important is that uh, they made a specific point about uh, AOC's um, boyfriend's feet, apparently, in, in the call-up post. And AOC replied because she was not having it she said if republicans are mad they can't date me they can just say that instead of projecting their sexual frustrations onto my boyfriend's free feet damn damn you know you're right we're so we're so right you're so right you know we're so mad that we can't date you Ooh, we're gonna we're gonna yell at your brother your fucking boyfriend's feet Ooh. Okay. okay so this is this is Okay, it gets worse, don't worry. AOC replied to her own comment saying, It started... It's starting to get old, ignoring the very obvious, strange, and deranged sexual frustrations <laughs> that underpinned the Republican fixation on me, women, and LGBT people in general. I thought the stereotype for Republicans was that they hated... Okay, whatever. Uh, whatever. I know. This, is, this, yeah. this is fucking stupid. These people clearly need therapy. Won't do it and use politics as their outlet instead. It's really weird. And then, I mean, yeah. and then this absolute More? fucking mad lad in the replies. He's a he's the only good blue check mark. The only good blue check mark. Now, because he is verified. We're actually gonna say the name of the person who posted it because he. This is public information. Th these are both verified accounts. You can find them. All right, they're both blue checkies, so we can say it. Okay. 
this person named Pete de Abroska, the king of Substack. I don't know this guy's lore, but here's what he said, okay? <sighs> this is bad. Imagine being so concited and self-absorbed, you think that everyone who disagrees with you is just mad they can't have sex with you. You're 32 and have a 50-plus body count, Lamau. <laughs> Holy shit. Damn, man went off on him, bro. For man real. Man went off. Holy uh, fuck. And it's a verified account. No way. This is, like, this is too funny. And then... I like... Hold on, wait. Yeah, what, go what, for no, no, yeah, go say, for say your thing, say your thing. No, 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 because this is, this is important. You okay. go. I found some, a reply... I said that. Oh, shoe, shoe on head. Replied, so true, queen. <laughs> Someone replied to that uh, with this thread that said, "Oh, oh, oh no, oh, uh, oh no." Wait. It, uh. <laughs> Wait, is it a copy pasta? Okay, maybe it's a copy pasta. That that would be much less funny. But basically, um, it's this, it's this like far left person speaking, um, saying that they want to get pounded by a Republican. Uh, pounded? Yeah. In what in what sense? In what sense? There's only one sense. There's two senses. No, there isn't. No, there is. You know what sense it is. There's two senses. Stop dodging. You know what There is two senses. There's pounding, which well, is kicking the shit out of someone. Nope, not that the one. There's the other not one. Not that one. It's the other one. The Plus very non-family friendly. Uh, friend. Also, uh, Shu on Head is apparently now bad for Republicans. This is... Uh, Yo, you wait, what? Uh, so I, I posted it in the script. This is fucking cringe. <laughs> okay, I but, mean, hey... Uh, Ooh, don't I mean, don't go anywhere with that, please. I mean, hey, if you're looking for one, I'm here. Bro, you're, you're both like sixes on a good day. This, this, is, this is coming from the solid one, by the way. Hey, I mean, six is better than one. True, six is better than one. But, you know. Exactly. Okay, yeah. so... There's one more. I swear this is important. So, this person, another verified check. So, we are going to say the name Ian Haworth. I'm going to, I hope that I pronounced that correctly. Uh, editor for the Daily Wire. So, uh, Ben Shapiro's network. Yeah. He uh, said, guy, I love his editing. I Fucking definitely his editing. do not want to date you with a reply to the original post that AOC made. And AOC quote tweeted saying, I'm glad you felt the need to share that with the world. Don't worry. This is a totally normal thought to have and share as an editor of a right-wing website and totally doesn't prove my point at all. I hear if you say it enough times, you'll actually start to believe it. Damn, roasty. <laughs> Damn. But, fuck, I that, mean... that post just gave me Omicron, no shot. Dan, that post that post was so powerful. Give you only like, gosh, damn bro. Yeah. This is this is something else. Like what? Yeah. Literally the the absolute double down. No way. I mean, I don't know. I mean, that guy's editing can get so much push more than better than she will ever be. Trust that guy's edit. No, go to the. Go to the fucking Daily Wire's YouTube channel. Yeah, I'm not Best doing that. Best fucking videos ever. I, I'll just take your word on so that. So funny. Honestly, the editing makes it so much better. Okay, so we've, we've, we've clear. Oh, no. Sorry. I thought we were done. We're not done. There's one more post. Oh, underneath yeah. that one. The fact that these people are so creepy slash weird, yet are also the ones responsible for shaping the news headlines... We all see in media should be really concerned. You. You shape the news headlines, AOC. You. Not them. You are the establishment. What are you talking about? Yeah, it's, it's actually quite ironic. Like, 
most of the times, and this is just from my observation, right, like, people on the right, they'll make videos about people on the left making outrageous statements. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. They make, the, they make the headlines for sure. Uh, yeah, totally, man. Yep. Yeah. It's great. Which, of course, is hilarious because another really, really common, you know, leftist uh, sort of insult towards right people is reactionary, which inherently implies that they're reacting to something that you said so they're not the one saying the thing they're just replying but whatever okay and then of course underneath that oh some some classic classic id poll i don't even want to know what knuckle dragging thoughts these people have all day while covering women in politics because it's all about the women yeah, women. I Everything is women. covering up the women. Like again, Kaika, my co-host, you have to talk to them to respect them. I respect all women. All of them. Cool. What about non-binary? What about gender fluid? Come on, they're, they're yeah. women too. I prefer lesbian Cap- women because then they'll never cheat on me. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Say that again. I prefer lesbian women because then they'll never cheat on me. With a man. And they'll still cheat on you. I, I mean... They'd probably cheat on you more, because they're not sexually attracted to you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, 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 I mean, no, it's no, not no. like that's very different for, like, the straight women anyways, but, you know. No, 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 but you see, it would be better. In what way? Because it would be better. In what way? This just seems be like better. some massive... Oh my gosh. This is just All some right. massive cope. I feel like that whole little thing that Kaika just did... You know, it took more time than needed. Uh, all right, then. I think we should go to the next topic. I uh, think, Chow, yeah, this is yeah. your topic so, to go. Well, well, like the others haven't been my topic. <laughs> so, yes, that, that whole thing with AOC. Uh, secretly down bad for all the people criticizing for her. That is interesting. Uh, speaking of. Uh, leftists being down bad for right wingers. That was a terrible segue. <laughs> so, this happened a little while ago. Um, all of these topics are actually a little bit dated because we've been gone for so long. This is sort of a catch up. But this one is so relevant that I think we just have to talk about it, okay? Let's talk about anarcho communists. We don't really talk about them often. We talk about Antifa, which is sort of an extending hand of the anarcho-communists, but we don't really talk about them a whole lot because they're not really super relevant in mainstream American politics, which, of course, is our domain. But they're starting to get more relevant, especially because of, you know, Antifa. So before we talk about this next topic, let's give some basic context for the ideology of anarcho-communism and sort of general leftist anarchism. I, I promise it's not as boring as it sounds. It is it is still pretty boring, but... Uh, okay. Anarcho-communism is basically the concept of an anarchist, or, you know, like, like no, no state society, right, where there's communism. So it's not the same type of communism as, like, the USSR, which was barely communism is basically just red fascism uh or like you know like the true marxist vision of it it actually is kind of similar to the true marxist vision of what communism is as opposed to socialism socialism was always a totalitarian ideology whereas communism is supposed to be a little bit more um loose a little more decentralized but not nearly as decentralized as anarcho-communism, which is sort of this ideology that uh, the state is violence, but capitalism is also violence. So we have to get rid of both and every appendage in between. So the state and, you know, the police, uh, this is where the whole defund the police thing comes from. Um, It's all, you know, racist, it's all sexist, it's all colonial, it's all institutional, it's all imperialist, it's every single buzzword you can possibly think of and it has to be destroyed just like how capitalism needs to be destroyed because it is also every single one of those things you can think of it like okay liber- normal uh, u.s libertarians and anarcho-capitalists 
believe that on some level the state is violence or it has the monopoly on violence and we can't you know let that happen we, we have to you know um protect our freedoms from totalitarian states that's always been the libertarian ideal and the communist ideal is that capitalism is sort of the obstruction uh to our rights and our freedoms and that we are forced to work or starve and that you know if we can all just work together instead of constantly competing and we don't let people hoard wealth then we'll you know all be able to survive without being forced to work and basically being put into capitalist slavery blah 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 whatever right uh we'll survive if we just eat the rich basic uh marxist theory uh which of course is incredibly relevant nowadays uh because of cultural marxism but we're getting to that don't worry so you take these two ideas, we'll call them lib-right and off-left, the quadrants in the political compass. What happens if you combine them? You get lib-left, libertarian-left. These are ideas like libertarian socialism. These are I the sort of uh, ideological underpinnings of organizations like and as Antifa and anarcho-communism. And anarcho-syndicalism, but anarcho-syndicalism is just anarcho-communism with extra steps, so we're not really going to talk about it. Anarcho-communism is no state, no capitalism. It's communism in an anarchist society. One last thing, insurrectionary anarchism, or just sort of general anarcho-nihilism, is a sort of center anarchist ideology. It's it's more associated with post-left, but that's sort of getting into the nitty-gritty. Um... Is sort of this concept that, um, you know, insurrection is not a means to an end, but that it's just a general means. Uh, this is not what the anarcho-communists believe. The anarcho-communists do believe that uh, the revolution, you know, is in service of something, even if in practice there is no difference. So, basically, anarcho-communists have the ideological underpinnings of Antifa, they hate capitalism, they hate the state, they want both to be gone so they can live in an anti-capitalist, anti-authoritarian utopia. And it's the general underpinning of Antifa. So anything that Antifa does, you can generally um, infer that it is at least somewhat uh, anarcho-communist praxis. So basically that entire rant, it's, it's all just what Antifa does. So... Um, an organization that, if not associated with Antifa, at least shares some of its goals, is the Black Hammer. Finally, we're getting to something kind of interesting. The Black Hammer, I believe, was either part of or was the main instigator of Chaz. Uh, do you guys remember Chaz? The... I forgot what the, the uh, anagram stand for. Chaz stands for Capital... No, not... Capital Hill Autonomous Zone. Chaz. Is he just going to stay muted for the entire podcast? I go to the Chazville in Seattle. Yeah. It's the Capital Hill Autonomous Zone, I believe. Yeah. Uh, that whole thing, I believe uh, the Black Hammer did ultimately play some part in it. And it is, I believe, led by uh, this this person named Gazi Kodzo? Gazi Kodzo, yes. Yeah, Gazi Kodzo. Okay, so that's the sort of um, long context for the Black Hammer. Now... That is basically as extreme as it gets for libertarian left. Now let's talk about the other side, authoritarian right. Uh, obviously, you know, we're, we're talking about, you know, far right, alt right ideas. We're talking about the Proud Boys. I'm assuming, that, boys. I'm assuming that if you are watching the Sons of Liberty channel, you at least somewhat understand who the Proud Boys are and what they're about. But if you don't... Give the fuck off our channel. The Proud Boys is essentially 
um, a political movement that is the exact opposite of the Black Hammer. Um, it still promotes violence. It still is... Um, well, I, I, at least I believe it promotes violence. I'm getting this from Wikipedia, which is the least uh, accurate source I could have possibly get for this, considering how political it is. But I, I'm, I'm generally willing to believe that the Proud Boys are not necessarily the most peaceful of people. It's, an, I believe, an exclusively male organization. And uh, the... Uh, Wikipedia says that it's neo-fascist. I don't know if I entirely believe that, but um, uh, it's definitely an authoritarian right-wing ideology. That is, at the very least, uh, self-evident. So, you got an authoritarian right ideology and a libertarian left ideology. They're both super extremist. They both hate each other. But they also both hate the center, specifically the center left. Like, you know, the Democratic Party, Fauci, Biden, Kamala, AOC, everyone we've been talking about today. Both of yeah, these all groups just so happen to hate the center left. And apparently, recently, they hate the center left more than they hate each other. Because they're joining forces. That's fucking... Uh, what the fuck? We live in clown world. We. It's it's because the two lesser evils got to join forces for the, okay. the great evil. Okay, I don't know if it's fair calling them lesser evils. They are essentially terrorist organizations. I mean... I mean, Antifa is a terrorist scares? organization, that's for sure. I, I mean... I don't know. Look, I, I do purpose. not like siding with these people. Okay, the Black Hammer is fucked. The Proud Boys are fucked. Okay, I do not side with either of them. However, if they're gonna do damage to people who I also do not like, I do not know why I would ever I would ever have a problem with that. People who I don't like fighting other people who I also do not like is a good thing. It cannot be anything else. So. Let's get into why this is happening. Uh, for the Black Hammer, it's pretty basic. You know, it's basic kill the liberals, liberals get the bullet to rhetoric that the commies have been saying forever. But why are the Proud Boys doing it? Oh, wait. That's right. Because the Overton window is moving ever leftward, and everyone is turning against them because, I mean, it's, 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 it's pretty obvious. They're the fucking Proud Boys. But anyways, these two extremist groups are teaming up. This is the Black Hammer Times on Twitter. You, he you heard it here first. The Black Hammer Organization and the Proud Boys are forming a co coalition to defeat the disgusting P-Star Dio. So, like, pedo, like pedophile. Loving welfare economy demoncrats, demon democrats, and their puppet master, Big Pharma, who has been poisoning all of us for too long. And there's a bunch of videos of people from these ex absolutely extremist groups, and they're teaming up. This is so weird. It's just so weird. Uh, okay, so let's let's sort of let's let's get our basis here, okay? What is the one thing that the establishment truly fears? Uh. I got your back, bro. What the fuck? To all the snakes and sellouts on the left, I've made a list. I've checked it twice. You're gonna find out who's naughty and nice. Gazi Kudzo's coming to your town, and I'm bringing friends with me. That's so fucking menacing. Well, I mean, you know. If I thought they were actually going to do anything. Which, maybe they might have, but... This is... This Very is doubtful. so weird. I, 
I just, I just have, I have no words. I never I mean, thought this day would actually come. It's like the saying is, you know, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. So obviously they're just gonna band together, or tr like I think it's just like a hoax. I don't think they're actually gonna do shit, but like they're just gonna claim they're together and then try to do something to the fucking who they're going against. So I don't know. You know what? It's like I said at the beginning. Two bad people I like fighting another bad person that I also don't like. You know what? It's only good. It's only a good thing. I do kind of it's hope that actually if this uh, can happen, that, you know, obviously there will be a lot of side effects because we'll be having, you know, the Proud Boys and the Black Hammer being taken more seriously, which obviously isn't good. But it also means that maybe there will finally be some serious pushback against, you know, Fauci's, uh, sort of, um, uncontested reign, and maybe it'll finally be the end of the Democratic Party. Fuck, that'd be nice. Hell yeah, dude. Oh, welcome Yo, back. Yo, welcome back from the depths of hell. Okay, so, Thank you. we've reviewed everything for this topic, we've talked about um, anarcho-communism and sort of the ideological underpinning of Antifa. We've talked about uh, um, the Black Hammer and we've talked about uh, the Proud Boys and how apparently they're teaming up. This is fucking insane and it's like my the Justice brain League. hurts and, and I the want Avengers. to talk about something less serious. Make Santa Ink Gradient. <laughs> Thank you for, please, just reading off the topic name. <laughs> a segue. Oh, I love that. Okay, look. We missed Christmas. Do we? And the reason why we missed Christmas is because we were actually celebrating Christmas with our families, with our friends. But just because we didn't talk on Christmas Day doesn't mean that things didn't happen on Christmas. I don't know if you've all been noticing something. Maybe you haven't. But there is a slow and steady decline in how Santa has been portrayed. And I say decline. It's a very specific choice of words. Not to say that these changes are necessarily, you know, bad. But it's just more about, like, the direction where it's going. Originally, it's been somewhat well established that Santa was usually a white guy. It, he lived up in the North Pole, you know, uh, lighter skin tones came from colder areas of the Earth. So it did kind of make sense. But here's the thing. Some people, you know, if, if you were black and you had a black child and they ask you why is santa white is my santa white or whatever you know some people would respond that you know santa isn't white he's every race and he just uh -huh. it becomes whatever race uh the family is when they when he visits their home and i gotta say i actually don't mind that interpretation i really don't I'm actually completely okay with, you know, with the magic of Christmas, with Santa being whatever race you want him to be. That's fine. But the important part of that is that I kind of think that this conversation about what race Santa is ultimately has to respect that on some level, you know, if you're going to add the black Santa or you know, um, the Latino Santa or the Asian Santa or whatever, that's fine. But you don't erase the white Santa. You don't erase any Santa. Just make more. I don't think there's any problem with that. But the internet is the internet nowadays. It's 2021 and nothing is sacred. And Santa is getting another makeover. Originally, the concept was to make him a penguin, so there would be no race problem at all. And of course, that has the 
uh, sudden and uh, unavoidable side effect of making everyone who enjoys Christmas now a crypto furry. But the other thing is that, you know, are we just not allowed to have human characters? And that the side effect of those human characters that they have to have a skin tone and maybe that skin tone isn't yours and that's just how it is? I, I don't know. It's it's weird. But it gets weirder. That's been the common theme of this episode. And it all culminates in Netflix's new show. <sighs> Santa Inc. Before we start on this absolute just downhill trend, have either of you watched or heard of Santa Inc. before this podcast episode? Santa Incorporated? Yes. No. On Netflix. I have better things watching that shit. On God, it's terrible. And we'll get and we'll get into why in just a moment. But so so neither of you've heard of it. Okay, so this is a fresh um, introduction. So yep. this is for you guys as much as it is for the audience. I will now briefly, hopefully, explain the plot of Santa Inc. So Santa is woke. He's a progressive gift giver. And his goal is to pick his successor to be a progressive diversity choice. But the show is very open that this is actually a power play by Santa to make himself look better. So he's picking a diversity hire. It's actually kind of a funny premise because it's totally a thing that happens. And... You know, this, this concept could be explored in a lot more of a, you know, funny and maybe even critical light if it wasn't being written and produced and hosted by these people who worked on it and by Netflix. So, yes. So, there's no, there's no, it's, it's supposed to be a comedy, but I'll just warn you right now, it's not funny. Don't watch it. Just hear this and then be done. Okay? So, the main character of Santa Inc. is this Jewish elf girl named Candy. Yikes. She is a bitch. She is horrible. <laughs> I hate her, and so does many of the people who have watched Santa Inc. God bless their souls. Or what's left of them anyway. She has two friends, a gingerbread woman, who I forgot the name because it doesn't matter, and a reindeer woman, who is also completely irrelevant and I completely forgot her name. The reindeer's thing is that she's an athlete and she likes sex. That's uh -huh. it. And the gingerbread woman's thing is that she has, like, some weird bipolar disorder or something. And she gets mad at her husband. And she cries. That's it. You can see how these characters are about as fleshed out as a fucking Christmas cookie. Which is to say, not much. So. Yeah. These characters are incredibly mid, and the story is fucking awful. The story is essentially that men are uh, sexist and won't uh, let Candy become Santa because they are sexist. And the only likable character, and I'll, I promise you this was an accident, is Santa. Santa actually ends up being the only character with some level of depth. Plenty of YouTubers have reviewed this show in greater detail and if we can remember to, we will post some of those reviews in the description of this video. However, however, you do not need to know everything about Santa Inc. to understand that Santa, they tried to make him the most unlikable character, right? They tried to make him sexist. They tried to make him, you know, 
uh, undeserving of his position. They, tr they even tried to make him a bad husband to Mrs. Claus. And it didn't work. Santa is the only even remote, remotely likable character. He's not super likable, but he's somewhat likable compared to everyone else in the show who is awful. They tried to make Santa the bad guy, and they ended up making him the unintentional protagonist. Oof. If Dang. that blunder does not demonstrate to you how bad this show is, then the videos are in the description for you to follow up on all of these beautiful characters and all of their wacky sitcom scenarios. Like, just for example, the, the gay guy who's gay and his whole joke is that he's gay. And that's it. Whoa, so funny. Someone I know, being, right? Have a sen different sexuality. Ooh, that's oh, so funny. Did I mention that the entire show is in stop motion? And it's yeah. meant to parody those, like, those stop motion, like, Christmas uh, like, shows. Uh, yeah, whatever. Um, it's supposed to be, like, a parody of that, except it's not actually a parody. It's a totally original uh, story. And it's somehow even worse than what a parody would be. But whatever. This uh, this entire situation just like it's it's corporate, but not even in the sort of fake relatable way. It's just it's just sad. Just tr like watching them try to make a political hot take with absolutely zero nuance. It's just sad. Also, one last thing before we move on from Santa Inc. All of the elves are Jewish. All of the reindeer are black. There is, like, no reason for that to be, you know, the case. Why they had to specifically make that the case. Especially considering the elves and the reindeer are the worker force of Santa's army. And they just... They just never... Um, they just never bring that up again. And, of course... Um, they blackwash the reindeer only to make them stereotypically strong and tough. <laughs> like, like, what well, are this, you doing? This is so weird, because I just saw, like, a clip of, like, the reindeer and the intern, like... Oh, yeah, cool. that, that shit's weird. That's just weird. Yeah, That's so, some bestiality so, crap. Yeah, so they're, they're, like, <laughs> they're, like, animating all this weird shit in stop motion. And oh, my God. It, I'm looking like, at some of it. It's just... This is bad. It is like, like super really bad. bad. Look, I don't say a lot of shit on, you know, movies and shit, because I'm not the one to speak since I don't really, you know, watch a lot of TV or movies, but that is bad, okay? Like... How do I explain how bad Why this is? Why is Santa... Okay, final question of the day for this show. I promise the last thing. Why the fuck is Santa Inc. so fucking horny? <laughs> like, I get it's supposed to be like a raunchy... It's like a furry at a furry con. On God. Like, it's, it's, it actually feels oh like somewhat worse. It's a... You know what? It's a furry with crinkle shorts. Shut up. God, this is just... Okay, so I, I, I think, I think we've, to look that up. I think we've no, talked enough we don't. about uh, Santa Inc. But my point is Crinkle that Ford. you know this was on the, the this up. was on the front page of Netflix. I mean, you know, until it got terrible ratings and it was took down. But the important part is <laughs> that you know this this entire show is what they want to rebrand Santa as, and okay, just like totally failed. But the important part is that this is the direction that they want to go with Santa. This is the sort of cultural movement that they want to go with the idea of Santa, and this is the subversive element they're going to use to bring Santa down to his knees, just like the end of the show. Oh, whoops, was that a spoiler? Don't watch it. Don't watch it. You, you don't need to do that to yourself. Oh, oh yeah, also, um, one last thing. So, I, for, I, forgot, I forgot the name of that guy. Uh, you know the guy that was like... Uh, I, th I think we talked about him, like, a couple episodes ago, where he was talking about how he got his car broken into, like, 15 times, and he didn't really care because it's not that big of a deal. Oh, Seth Rogen? Yes, yeah, Seth, Seth Rogen was on yeah, the yeah. production team of Santa Inc., 
And oh, when it no. was and when it was getting bombed, when it was getting bombed, do you know what he said? He was like, racism. On, yeah, he said on Twitter that uh, he was um, like either amused or annoyed that a bunch of white supremacists were coming onto his show and disliking it. He called. Bro, I bet he was did. high as fuck when he was making this. I bet he was high as fuck when he was making this. He was like, dude. What if we had this like gay uh this uh this gay guy and this snow angel we like animate them fucking in like uh stop motion man uh, that, that'd be so funny. Seth Rogen is known to be high as shit, and I bet he was so high making this fucking shitty ass show. Okay. Oh my fucking gosh. But 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 uh, yeah. So this this entire situation is just oh, ow. So fucked. Yeah, and. Um, if we can take anything from this entire mess, it is that ultimately, on some level, this is the direction they want to go with Santa. And while I'm not suggesting that we go all Christian crazy about it, I do believe that some level of cultural protectionism should be enacted so we don't, you know, lose Santa like we've lost so many other things. But that's just me. I don't know. Yeah. So, well, what? I think it's too late for that. I feel like we're gonna lose Santa. I maybe. I don't. I, mean, I don't want to believe that. I'm sorry. I just don't want to believe bro, that. Bro, to be honest, this Christmas has not even felt like Christmas. Like, there's barely little like Christmas decorations out, and like it's just I don't know. This year's fucked. Yeah. This goes back to the whole COVID thing. But anyways, uh, we're we're running a little bit low on time. So I want to mention a couple more points, and then we're done. Uh, this next point, I believe, is um, something that we've actually mentioned before, but I want to expand on it because uh, there was this chart that was trending, and I kind of want to make uh, a, a quick little note about that before we yeah. uh, end today. And that is, um, we've talked about the ideology of scientism. That is this, uh, this sort of cult-like religion around the concept of the facts, ma'am, study show, you know, all this shit. Uh, and basically blindly trusting what quote-unquote experts say. I believe we've discussed this in the podcast before. Okay. So, there is this uh, conspiracy chart um, that w uh, that went... <laughs> fuck. Sorry. That... that uh, we'll, we'll cut that out. That, uh, there is this conspiracy chart that went viral... Um, a little while ago, and obviously we, we weren't able to touch it because, you know, we were gone. But it was, th it was this huge thing where this w it was this official conspiracy chart, and it had um, this certain air of authority to it. It was uh, developed by this person named Avi Richards, and it documents which conspiracy theories are... You know, some of them are true, you know, pretty true. Some of them are skeptical, but not harmful. Some of them are whack job, but again, not too harmful. Some of them are directly dangerous. And some of them are, well, absolutely insane. And also they make you anti-Semitic somehow. So let's go down the rabbit hole, friends. So, right. starting from the bottom, this is the grounded in reality line. So, if you believe this, you're just objectively correct. This is things like MK Ultra, NSA Mass Surveillance, FBI Spied on MLK, Project Mockingbird, all this stuff, Watergate, okay? This is in the green tier. So, the person who made this believes that if you believe this, you're not crazy, you're just right. That's just how it is. Then, the blue tier. We have questions. We live in a simulation. Area 51. UFOs. Jeffrey Epstein didn't kill himself. Okay, that should be, should be the green. Let's, come on. Yeah, let's be, let's be honest on that. Come okay. on. JFK assassination. <clears throat> Denville International Airport, etc. This is sort of the idea of, um, this is, you know, this is definitely still speculation, 
But there's a lot of evidence, and it's not hurting anyone. That Can I just mention something the, before you go? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure, please. How is the JFK assassination we have questions? I'm pretty sure JFK got assassinated. Like, And I understand that, oh, there, there are some questions on the killer, but not the assassination himself. Def JFK definitely got assassinated. I just, I just want to point that out. Mm. But yeah. yeah, I don't know whether it was referencing the killer or whether it was referencing, you know, the killing. But either way, it's, yeah. I, I personally believe that it is in the right place. Because I do believe that it, it, it was about who the killer was. So, now let's talk about the pink layer. Which says that it is now leaving reality. Unequivocally false, but mostly harmless. So, essentially, you're crazy... But you're not going to kill anyone over it. This, this isn't, like, a big deal. Titanic never sank. Alien abductions. Cryptids. Mattress firm money laundering scheme. Elvis lives. Greta Thunberg is a time traveler. Michael Jackson is still alive. And Ted Cruz is the Zodiac Killer, among others. Oh, and uh, 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 Kylie Jenner is a clone. That's another one. Two clones. Yeah. It's a lie. <laughs> okay, so. Now, we are going into the yellow tier. This is pure reality denial. And this is dangerous to yourself and others. So believing these things will literally kill people literally. 5G... Is toxic. How the fuck is that gonna kill someone? Okay. The US presidential election was stolen. Okay. Maybe. Vaccines have microchips. Okay. I mean, how the fuck? Wait, how, how are they anti Semitic? The no, no, no. We're, we're not getting there yet. Don't worry. We're not getting there yet. That, that, that will happen. Okay. This is not anti Semitic, but it is dangerous. The pandemic. The moon landing isn't real. Biden is a robot. Chemtrails. Feral people in forests. Okay, that's just literally true. Essential oils cure all illnesses, which was a famously left thing. Antifa did January 6th. Jet fuel doesn't melt steel. <laughs> that's literally just a fucking 4chan meme. No way. And the concept of soy boys. And global warming is a hoax. Some of this is just complete BS, but others, it, it just seems like slander. Like, okay, the Iver medicine cures COVID thing, you know, I don't think that's true now, but thinking that was true before wasn't necessarily a conspiracy theory, because the President of the United States said it. But don't worry, it gets better. Wait. How is soy boys okay. dangerous to yourself and others? Yeah, I, like, no, that 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 is just that's just slander. That is that is literally just slander. Like I don't like soy boys, but I don't know how they're dangerous per se. You no, know? no, no, no. What what it's saying is, if you believe that soy boys are a thing and that they can exist, you are dangerous to yourself and others. Um. Okay. Okay. So now, this is the anti-Semitic point of no return. So, if you believe that the Holocaust didn't happen, what? Okay. If you believe that the Holocaust didn't happen, you hate Jewish people. That's completely reasonable, because it's literally a genocide. But, if you believe that cultural Marxism is real, or that the earth is flat, you hate Jewish people. What the fuck? <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. Holly <laughs> Hollywood <laughs> is turning your kids gay. They literally admitted to that. They literally <laughs> admitted to that. I, I don't have the video, but they literally said, we want to turn your children gay. They literally said that like on live television. Okay. New World Order. That's great replacement might actually be anti-Semitic. But I think it's just more generally racist in general. 
it's the idea that like you know white people are being like you know like replaced by immigrants in their own uh, countries uh, and being eradicated slowly as sort of like a slow burn genocide and it, it, it's it's a uh, sort of uh, marketed as um you know a sort of a very far right wing thing and i do g genuinely believe that it's very crazy and not true but if i may just say you know when you have lefties saying that white people should be genetically replaced uh, you know you're not doing your cause any favors that's all i'm saying so the concept of a deep state and QAnon, a uh, world ruled by supreme shadow elite, promotes hatred and violence towards marginalized groups. What the fuck? If you are if you are in QAnon, you hate Jews. Mm. I actually don't know much about QAnon, so maybe they do. But PizzaGate, you hate Jews. If PizzaGate. Nazis on the moon. Okay, that's literally just fucking like that. That's a meme post. Come on, come on. Nazis on the moon. That's ugh, whatever. George Floyd crisis actor. <laughs> uh, Illuminati. Why is Illuminati this high up here? The fuck. Yeah, I feel like I don't. I don't want to say anything on the Illuminati. Never mind. No, but I'm senior. Okay, so. Okay, this this entire uh, this post basically just shows that essentially the whole thing about the conspiracy chart is that if you believe anything that goes against the cultural paradigm, then you are hateful and you do not deserve a voice. That has been the trend for quite a little while now, and this chart only seeks to reinforce that. Some of the ideas, like QAnon and Holocaust Denial and The Great Replacement, are, from what I can tell, actually pretty hateful. And, yeah, they probably hate Jews, too. But cultural Marxism is literally proven. And Nazis on the moon and jet fuel doesn't melt steel beams and the other ones, those are jokes. And cultural Marxism is, like, proven what is this yeah this entire post just reeks of, a, of an agenda where if if you have sort of like if you have a crazy belief but it's not politically you know uh considered cancel worthy then your idea is in the pink layer or in the blue layer or the green layer or maybe in the yellow layer sometimes, like the essential oils comment. But if you have a if you have a belief that is even slightly a little bit wacko, Jabo, but it's right wing, immediate red, immediate anti-Semitic, immediate genocide potential. It, you know, I'd say what the fuck, but that requires me to be surprised, and I'm just not. This is totally to be expected of this sort of ideology that anything, any d dissonance, any disagreement is hateful and terrible and must be silenced. That is their motto. That is their prerogative. So, that's the conspiracy chart. Um, I know we covered it pretty in depth. Uh, maybe we could have gone on a little bit faster, but that whole thing, it required a lot of detail, unlike the Santa Inc. thing, which you can just, you know, look up yourself. And, finally, I know you're probably all sick of my voice by now, but I just wanted to say that I appreciate everyone who has watched our stuff and has subscribed and has supported us. And the reason why I'm saying that now and above any other time is because it's it's the channel's birthday. Or at well, least it was a little while ago. Well. I mean, uh, we're a bit late to that too. 
I, I mean, mean, technically, nobody knows when we recorded this section. So, I mean, we're still late to that. Um, we recorded yeah. it like a month late, but it's fine. Happy birthday, Sons of Liberty. Come on. Sure, I, I think we uploaded our first video on January 1st. Let me search that Did, did we? I'm pretty sure we did. Okay, but well, anyways, the channel was created on December 17th. It is now January 5th of the next year. We have officially had one year of the podcast with 23 episodes and counting. You know, oh, 22 episodes and counting. Yeah. And I just wanted to say to everyone that watches us, or every, anyone that watched us, thanks for sticking around. We really appreciate it. You know? Hey, that's a little over one episode a month. That's Or technically two. Yeah. I mean, you know, all things considered, Whoa. that's pretty good. Yeah. Okay, so let, 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 let's. Let, I want to take this time to give a little tiny, tiny update, okay? Um, we are going to be uploading a video very, very soon after this one. Very, very soon. Maybe even on the same day. Who knows? Perhaps, yeah. About what happens tomorrow, you know, after the day of recording this. Because tomorrow, from the day that we're recording this, is January 6th, the anniversary of the Capitol riots. And we have got to see that. Yeah. We wanted to make this video to catch up on everything that we've missed so that tomorrow can be all about bashing on lefties, crying about January 6th. But, after that, we're thinking of moving to a, a bi-weekly upload schedule. So you'll be seeing an episode from us uh, once every two weeks. I think that's uh, sustainable and reasonable. We'll, we'll try not to disappear again, uh, we'll, but we won't be making weekly uploads like we did for a little patch there. Because that's just how we get burnt out, and that's how we, you know, we run out of topics to talk about, and we run out of steam to do the episodes. So, going forward, we're going to do uh, one every two weeks. And we'll try to stick with that for as long as we can. But there will be exceptions, of course, where if we feel like we need to make a video, then we'll make it, of course. Yeah, like... It's it's not going to be consistent. We're not going to have a specific day where we upload once every two weeks. We upload when we feel like it, but it'll be somewhere around once every two weeks. Yeah. So, you know, if you want to subscribe, you know, it means a lot to us. I, I know that literally every single uh, YouTuber on the planet, like, their entire endgame is just subscribe, subscribe, bell, like, yeah, give me numbers. But seriously... We like knowing that people are hearing us and that people are willing to listen to ideas that maybe aren't as openly discussed or as, you know, comfortable. You know, if no one's going to talk about them, there's got to be a place for that. And I'm not saying we're the only people who do that, but I'm saying, you know, we're in that brand. That's what we do. And if you're looking for something that isn't the mainstream, you know, we'll always be here. I don't, I don't plan on giving up on Sons of Liberty for a long, long time. Yeah. So here's to our first year. And here's to many more. Thanks for... No, actually, I'm, I'm filing my retirement papers, guys. Uh, yeah, it's, no, no, it's, 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 it's okay. We can do the podcast without him. Uh, yeah. So no. uh, everyone except for Sonny, uh, we'll, we will see you for the next episode. We're announcing our new host, Logan Paul. <laughs> Did you hear you see you release a drink? Yeah. It's oh, down. We're partnering up with him. Yeah, we're partnering up. Oh, well, you guys are. Now. I never stopped recording, you bozos. You worry about leaving a better planet for our kids. How about leaving better kids for our planet? Entire generation offended at everything. Getting mad that a human thinks all lives matter. We don't need black or white or left or right. What we need is common sense. We need balance. We're all in the same boat. Why are you trying to make holes? If they sink, we sink. This is madness.